Hey everybody, I'm very happy to be here today with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. Not only is he a global humanitarian and an activist for human rights around the world, but he's also my spiritual teacher. His Holiness Sri Sri Ravi Shankar is the founder of two international nonprofit organizations, the Art of Living Foundation and the International Association for Human Values. Sri Sri Sudarshan Kriya, a powerful breathing technique aligning mind and body, is taught through the Foundation's happiness programs available globally. These courses are focused on enabling more people to live happy, stress-free lives every day. The Foundation also delivers rehabilitation programs for prisoners and soldiers, while also providing happiness programs to people living in conflict and post-conflict zones to help them manage the stresses of day-to-day -day living. Millions around the globe have participated in Sri Sri's talks and happiness programs. Sri Sri himself has been invited by the World Economic Forum, the UN, and various governments around the world to share his spiritual wisdom and knowledge. He travels the world to speak to audiences about how they can bring more happiness to their everyday lives. I'm beyond grateful to sit down with him for today's interview. Thank you for being with us, Guruji. Welcome. <laughs> so my first <coughs> question to you. You come to Canada and the Art of Living Center here in Shawinigan quite often, sometimes even twice a year. What motivated you to plan visits to Quebec City, Montreal and Ottawa? Why now? As you see, there is this um, uh, campus here, meditation center. The people come from all over North America here. And it is the need of the people that makes me come here. Mm. So when we come here and uh, we often hold um, silence retreats, you know, and a week long silence rejuvenates body, mind and spirit. And uh, it is so much needed in today's hustle bustle and very busy world. People need to go in and reflect and get recharged, you know. There's a whole idea to come and recharge. And it's a, it's a great place to, to be. Nature is so beautiful and so quiet. It's a perfect place to go within. So specifically to your public talks, finding happiness and the talk about happiness has become very trendy. From Pharrell's song, Happy, to the Happiness Advantage by Sean Aker to this discussion around positive psychology. So what does unbridled true happiness in our days really mean? You know, this, this is what we have been uh, doing for the past 33 years around the globe, you know, to bring true happiness from within. So each one of us has that hidden potential when we um, realize that we have so much potential, knowledge, wisdom within us. Happiness simply wells up from within. And so we conduct uh, seminars and I give talks all over. And people seem to be benefiting by that. What I've noticed in my experience um, as a yoga teacher within this space of mindfulness and meditation is that there is a moment of resistance when individuals are ready to come on the path or to begin learning how to meditate, where the choice is substances, alcohol, self-harm, abuse, or meditation and You know, people are becoming quite intelligent these days. Yeah. They are not, uh, they are moving away from this abuse, substance abuse, alcohol, and they are moving towards something more positive, something more creative, something more uplifting in their life. Mm. Uh, there is a, a huge wave, I would say, uh, of interest towards uh, positive thinking and meditation, actually. And intelligent people do come on that. <laughs> That's what we're seeing more and more, especially here in North America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the North American context, you're a man of the world. What would you say is one of the most pressing problems facing us today as individuals in North America? See, North America, there's a lot of frustration, number one. The second is um, due to pressure, peer pressure, financial pressure, and violence is increasing domestic violence and frustration. Now the reason for this is 
uh, lack of uh, awareness about resolving our stress and tension from within. So that is where these simple techniques of breathing, meditation, yoga, they all come to help. And those who have uh, on this path, they realize that, you know, my God, why did I waste so many days being depressed, angry, agitated? I could have taken this long ago. Yeah, this is the uh, common comments I hear from people all the time. So they, they regret that why they didn't take it earlier. So I would uh, uh, suggest people just don't delay. Just make your life a celebration and tap into the vast reservoir of joy and energy that uh, we are all born with. But we are not using it, we are not uh, tapping into it. So when people hear the word meditation, we discuss often about thoughts that come and I'm not good at meditation and how do I get better at this? How can viewers who have perhaps never meditated before what would you suggest? Just be there in one of these talks, you will see that uh, I'm going to lead you uh, into meditation. You will see it is so simple and yet so profound and so uplifting and relaxing. Meditation is not something that you do hard, it's, a, it's not a hard thing to achieve. It, it only needs the skill, a little bit understanding of how it works then it is very easy. It is something that you can do, everybody can do on their own at home, once they learn it. Mm. <laughs> and more on the Canadian context. So there is a lot of municipal elections happening across the country this year, specifically in Ottawa, Toronto. And not only that, but next year is a big federal election year here in Canada. And I know that India came out of a very interesting and exciting election year. What recommendations do you have, um, especially in a country where voter engagement, political engagement, is at a, a low point? As a low point. Huh. This is an issue here, you know. I would say, see, as human beings, we all have some duties, some responsibilities. So every citizen of a country has responsibility to uh, exercise their franchise. And it is necessary, you know, it's our duty. We should consider it as a sacred duty to elect our representatives. So, uh, people should go to the booth, polling booth and uh, exercise their vote. It is necessary. And, you know, there is a sort of uh, a feeling, well, everybody is same, why should I go and uh, waste my time or cast my vote? I think we should come out of this apathy and dynamically participate in democracy. What do because you these, uh, uh, these countries are so um, vibrant with uh, democratic values and uh, the system is so good. But people should be proactive and use those system and uh, cast their vote. I would say to everybody, not just politicians, uh, three values if we cherish in our life, we can progress in any field. One is purity in our heart, keep our hearts clean. And then clarity in the mind and sincerity in action. Purity in heart, clarity in mind, sincerity in action. If we cherish these three values, you know, we can excel in any field, whether it's business, politics, uh, religious or spiritual or education field, any field, social work. So you have spoken in the past about how in certain contexts your appearance has caused preju prejudice or discrimination or perhaps people have been intimidated by the way that you look in attending these public talks. Why do you believe it is so and how can we transform Education, education, and today, uh, you know, it's much better. Uh, I'm talking about 10, 15 years ago. There was a lot of prejudice, east, west, north, south, racial prejudice and religious prejudice, uh, and the way people look or dress and all this. But today, I think people are uh, moving away from that. We are 
coming into a global scenario where uh, we accept uh, you know wisdom from every part of the world and you I usually used to say and even today I say that see we have no hesitation in taking food from any part of the world but when it comes to wisdom or knowledge why should we hesitate right people go and have Chinese food they don't turn Chinese <laughs> <laughs> right and you go and eat Danish cookies you don't become Danish now, similarly knowledge and wisdom from wherever it comes whichever corner of the world we must accept and this is how we can create a, a global community you know our idea is to see the whole world as one family if we attend to this we, we have this goal of uniting people from all parts of the world uh, then we can solve many of the world's issues and problems and today see there's violence there is crime in the world it's so pathetic we are in 21st century and still what's happening in some parts of the world is appalling so world peace is possible only when we find our inner peace and we let go of our prejudice our whole effort is to come out of prejudice of any sort and um, smile more. <laughs> so my final okay. question, um, why do you do what you do and what will people take away from these events when they come see you? You know, I'm not doing this thing to gain something. I want to share what I have. All these talks, all this travel I do only to share whatever I have uh, been gifted or I have learnt in my life. So I share with everybody and it has helped millions of people. That makes me want to share more. If it has not helped anybody, I would have rather just sit in one corner of the world happily. <laughs> But now, since I, what I'm sharing with people or teaching has helped millions um, and their lives are transformed, there are more joy and happiness. So that makes me go more and, uh, you know, put my 100%. Is there anything else you'd like to say? That's it. <laughs> See you there. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Guruji, so much. Jai Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram.